use the like raise your hand like if that happens and i mute myself and i just raise my hand so the and then we can unmute yeah. you okay yeah something like that might be good but i'd like to hear your voices and see your faces that would be awesome we can't all get together in person because we all live all over the place she said, I did my salve with four different herbs. I emailed you about it. Now I have a, and now I have a lot, a lot. Now I have a lot. Zoom might be good, she said. Yeah, maybe we'll do Zoom. We'll see you there. Um, Amy's directing. Hey, Amy. Hello, hello, hello. I'm probably butchering these names. But That's okay. <laughs> I have my friend Corey over here. Again, she's reading the comments because I'm so far away. I can't even begin to read those comments. Yeah, they're tiny. They are tiny. Until I get to a thousand on this YouTube, I can't go live on my phone. If I could do it on my phone, I could have it right here and read. Right, it. you could have it on a little tripod and yeah, just do your just like life. I do in TikTok. Yeah. Um, or we were just talking about possibly doing these in the future on a Zoom. That way, I can hear your voices, I can see your faces, something like that. Um, you know, there's different platforms. So just trying to figure this all out. But Amy, I don't know if you saw as well. Um, Brycey, who is the astro herbalist, her and I are going to do a, um, a live together on TikTok. And we're going to answer your questions and try to help demystify some of the herbal world together. She's got so much information and we'll both have a different perspective. You know, even on the same plant, like on the stinging nettle we're going to talk about today, she could pick a whole different path to go down about the stinging nettle than I would just because we all, you know, have different, um, different things we use it for, you know, herbs don't have just one use. Most pharmaceuticals, they'll say, take this for this, take this for this herbs, you know, they go in and they balance, but they also have so many different possible uses to help support our bodies. So that's what's so exciting. And I, I feel a little more organized here with you guys today. I've got my little things laid out. I don't really like sitting, but that's what we got right now. Amy says, I just watched that video. I can't wait to see that live chat. Yeah. That's so you must be talking about. Yeah. If you could put some, it will help us gain traction. If you guys comment, within my video that helps push it out to the algorithm more. Um, or if you share the video or you like it or you keep it in your favorites, all that stuff helps boost our algorithm so we can get the word out about herbs and, and help people learn. Finn says one again. Mm -hmm. Mine has constantly said one. I don't know. When you pop in, let us know you're here. If you could just say your name. So we'll get to know you guys. Uh, Severin says, is that video on TikTok or on YouTube? The one where Bryce and I are going to do it together is going to be on TikTok. Yeah. And then, so when I do a live on TikTok, I can't share the entire live, but I can dissect it and edit it and share bits and pieces of it. So that's what we're hoping to do with that as well. I think she might be talking about the video that Amy said she watched. Mm -hmm. On the TikTok, the TikTok video. I think that's what you're talking about. Yeah, and that's what I'm talking about. So, oh, okay. So, Bryce and I will do a yes. live on TikTok with all the questions that you guys submit to us. And yeah, and we're going to actually do an event. So, when we do that, I'm not sure who's going to go live, if it's going to be Bryce or me. Um, but we'll have a little banner on our videos that shoot out. So it'll give you a time and a date for that. So you can, I think you can click it and register for it. There's no cost. And then you'll be notified once we start that live. And then you can put it on your calendar. Yeah. So we'll get going. Is it, I can't even see the time. It's 12 19. It's 12 19. Okay. So who's all in the house? So far, Severin and Amy. Okay. All right. And a lot of people are catching these afterwards. So, um, Severin, you've messaged me about some of the stuff that you've done with the with the herbal kit, so to speak. Amy, what have did you make anything? Did you guys enjoy that toner? Did you use the toner? Do you understand what a toner is for? I just want to go over, you know, everything that was in that box. 
And there's so many different ways we can use the things in that box. It's like the herbal teas. It's not just, you don't have to just do, do herbal tea. You can make a salve out of that blend. You can make a tincture out of that blend. You can make a glyceride out of that blend. Anything come through? Not yet. Okay. I have like a hair on my eyelash. And then I lost my live chat for a minute and I was like, oh, oh, oh but I got it back. You could always look at that thing too, but then oh, they're, yeah. they're going to see your head in the, in the picture. <laughs> so the project, it was pretty simple, but I want to go over some different things that we can make with this project. It's not just simply a... Um, a face mask. Let me turn that down just a little bit. Amy said she hasn't really had a chance to play with it. She's been working too many hours lately. Darn work gets in the habit. But that, so that toner, we'll go back to that for just a second. You can use that on sunburns. You can, of course, use it on your face. But it's great for anything, like even a bee sting, it would be great to put on. Somebody just say something. Um, Severin, I'm here to learn. You're here to learn. I'm here to teach and learn. I want to learn from you guys too. You know, you might have a different perspective even than I do. But yeah, so that toner can be used for all that stuff. What? Amy's at work right now. <gasps> Amy, bad girl. I'll try bad to girl. keep it quiet. Shh. We'll talk. We'll be quiet. We'll whisper. But the so the French green clay and with the green clay. Every bag I get of this is different, even if it comes from the same manufacturer. You know, it's a it's a natural it's a natural mineral, so clay is going to consistently look different. Um, some of like this is a pretty light green. I think you can see that. Some of yours might be a little bit darker green. It just it just depends on the the vein of the clay that they're in to get it. But clay is. Um, it's so detoxifying. It's, it's just fantastic for us for our skin. And the nettle powder that you can add to this clay, you can use different herbs to also incorporate with your clay. Another thing this is good for is um, bee stings, bug bites, anything like that. So a lot of these herbal products aren't good for just one thing. They're good for an array of things. So that's what's so cool about herbalism. Questions? Not yet. Okay. So, but yeah, that, I mean, that's pretty simple. We just open our little bag and, and I just, Corey asked me how I made this into powder. I just took that little grinder that maybe you guys have seen. It's an electric grinder. I can't think of the name of it, but I just took my nettle, my dried nettle, and I just ground it up. You could use a coffee grinder. You could use a mortar and pestle. Um, any, anything like that. And when we're doing tincture, say this, this is our beautiful dried singing nettle. I crush it up even more when I'm gonna use it for a tincture. I mean, you can just simply crush it in your hand or use any of those ways that I just talked about. So the smaller we can get the particles, the stronger our medicinal, whatever we're making is gonna be because it's gonna, interact with more of the liquid. Does that make sense? It's still too loud for me. Here we go. Anything? Nope. Okay. So you guys may or may not know, I have um, some nerve damage in my left ear. It's from when I had shingles back in uh, 2016, I think it was. So some, some days, like the my speaker for my phone is over here and my ears kind of really bothering me today. So, and it, I don't know. So I just needed to turn that down. So that's a little bit about me that you might not know. Yeah. So, but that's as simple as it is. And you could even use, instead of just water, you could use apple cider vinegar in your clay. And again, you could pick different herbs, you know, depending on what you wanted, you could, uh, the stinging nettle is fantastic if you um, wanted to, like, calm a skin issue. That would be just fantastic. You could use plantain. Plantain is great for anything that itches. So back to the stinging nettle. This has nerve properties. Oh, I'm going to read you something. This was kind of funny to me. 
Of course, I got to put my glasses on. So, Rosemary Gladstar, I've shown you, this book is probably backwards. Is it backwards on there? It'll probably take a second to come up on your phone. Let me see. Nope. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. So, it must mirror it itself. Yeah. Um, she is just fantastic. She's like the mother of herbalism. I've got a couple books here from her that I want to share with you. But this is what she starts off talking about stinging nettles. And I, it's just a really short little snippet, and I want to read it to you guys. So the parts to use, the leaves, the seeds, the roots, and the young tops. So let me show There's my scissors. I'm not touching it. So my nettle is now going to seed. I'm going to bring this up here to you guys. Back under the tablecloth. So those are the seeds of the plant. Those are, these don't have stings on them. And you know, these little tiny stings are like hypodermic needles. If you can see those on there and they're on the leaves and on the stem and the stem is square. Hang on. Okay, there's a good question from Amy. Are there any herbs that you would not want to mix with stinging nettles? Yes, that, that gets, well, not really. Um, now just, it would be specific to you guys though. If, if you would have a, problem with that specific herb I'm trying to get you to see the see how that's square so it's a square i don't want to touch it see that can you see the yeah i put it you see the little needles on the leaves I don't know you if can tell that it's square yeah isn't that cool yeah but yeah there's little nettles and so these nettles stingers they there's a this is a fantastic herb for allergies and I was just reading about freeze drying it. And it's, if you can freeze, I see all these people with freeze dryers on TikTok and I want to get one, but they're like $3,500. So I'm like, we're going to wait on that one a little bit. But uh, if you make a tincture with your stinging nettle, it's fantastic for allergies. So, and that kind of goes along. Like if you put it in the clay, you can even make a poultice with that after it's dry. So if I let this wilt which it's kind of wilting i cut this probably two hours ago it will wilt and then the little hypodermic needles all along this plant and on its leaves won't be stingy so um of course you'd never want to rub fresh nettle on your face because that would be horrible but let that dry you can either dehydrate it or just let it wilt or you can you can uh, put it in boiling water for like two minutes and then the needles won't be anymore. Is there a question? Uh, Severin says she has a freeze dryer and she loves it. I need to get one of those freeze dryers. <laughs> you guys, the last time I was on here, I bought that oil infusion machine. So you guys are a bad influence. I'm just saying. <laughs> but last time there was a good sale on it. There we was a good sale. It, so maybe you should go home and search it. Maybe Let me know if there's a good sale, sale on a freeze dryer. Might be half off. <laughs> so anyways, I just wanted to show you that. I wanted to show you the um, seeds was why I got up. So let me finish this little bird. Uh, the benefits. Uh, so this, this is the stinging nettle that farmers despise, hikers hate, and children learn to avoid because it's so stingy, <laughs> right? I just thought that was kind of funny. But this, so, and a lot of this was in the information I sent home with you guys. I took a couple of notes. Did you know stinging nettle has four times the vitamin C of an orange? That blew my mind when I learned that fact. Is there another comment? Okay. All right. Um, it has heart-shaped leaves that you guys saw in your little seed packets. Did anybody plant their seeds yet? I was, I have a, a friend of mine makes these. They're local to me. They have a beautiful shop. Um, they make all kinds of like really gigs and things like that out of copper and beautiful things. There's a question. Uh, I think it was in reaction to the four times the vitamin C. Mm -hmm. Severin says, what? Yeah, what? And yeah. Amy said, um, apparently you're a bad influence too. She bought the Levo. I know Levo she did. Because of, the, or because of the last herb class. So we'll all have freeze dryers pretty soon. Yeah. Oh my gosh. But yeah, so the leaf is a heart-shaped leaf. And these little seed packets, you could grow them inside. You could make a little windowsill herb, herb garden, or you can, you know, you can plant them outside. You can now where we live. I think we're maybe done with the frost. I don't know. We had some this week. I don't know. But I just think these are so cool. What do you guys think about getting these seed packets? Because it's, I think it's really important to, um, 
learn all aspects of the herb when we're really trying to gain that knowledge. How it grows, what it looks like when it starts coming up from the dirt. You know, somebody just, maybe it's not on yours yet. Um, and Severin says, and I used my Levo since the last class finally. Yay. But um, yeah, so, you know, one of the things that is fun about these kits, so you get, you get the herb, you get to see it, you get to smell it. And you can start to learn some of the properties just by looking at the herb and smelling it and then taste it. You know, take a little bit of each herb and make a, just make a tea and, and taste that tea. Is it bitter? Is it sweet? Does it have cooling properties? Does it have drying properties? That's how we learn about the energetics of a plant. Um, oh, it's also, I wrote a couple of notes so I would be a little more organized. It's very high in iron. You can make an iron tonic with that. Love the seed addition. I, to the thank box. you. Because that's something I really, I, I was so excited when I found that they did these. So you have the next one is coming up and we're going to do the St. John's Wharton. So you're going to get another pack of seeds along with some extra surprises. Kevin says, I love your spring cleansing detox tea. Did you like that? Oh, that spring. So you could make that into a tincture. Okay. Um, I didn't have a thing of that to bring over. And that's just a tea that I make for you guys. Those are not available on our website. They're not available anywhere else. Exclusive. Ex they're exclusive for you guys. <laughs> so I formulate these with the herb of the month. And I just want to really make that special for you guys. But like the chickweed soap, so many of you reached out to me and said you loved that soap. So so I will bring that into the shop if that's something that you guys enjoy. So in a way, you're my guinea pigs. Ha ha. No, but nothing. I saw something. Uh, that's interesting, but it was probably in relation to Yeah, yeah. Because these are just a little bit behind. Oh, that's okay. But yeah, so your spring cleanse detox, you could make into um, a tincture and you can either use a glycerin. You could use um, your alcohol tincture. Um, so you can make an oxymel, which is a combination of vinegar and honey. And I'm going to show you some more of those things in these classes as we progress. Uh, some of the upcoming boxes, I'm going to include all of the ingredients, like a little block of shea butter. Um, I don't know about the cocoa butter because that might melt. I'm going to send some infused oils, even though all of you have the oil machines, so that you are ready to, to use the stuff. Um, and I kind of incorporated that into some of this next box too. Severin's husband loved that soap, so she bought more of it. Yeah, you're one of the reasons that that is now on our shelves. You were the first person to reach out for me. And I, I thank you for doing that because I want to, you know, I want to have things that people really like available. So yeah. There's something else pop up. She just said, thank you. Oh, oh, Amy says, with an oxymel, um, and I'm sorry, I gotta get better at pronouncing. Do you strain the herbs back out? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So it's just like a tincture, any of those. Like, you know, when we make our herbal teas, we're gonna strain the herbs out. Um, when we make a tincture out of glycerite or um, alcohol, or we make an oxymel, yes, we're gonna strain those all out of there. And they all have about roughly the same amount of time, about four weeks. Um, or if you have a Levo machine, like four hours, I did do a tincture. Now I did a glycerite. I did the vanilla extract and that turned out really, really good. I got the, um, vanilla beans grade a, I believe is what they were. And I use, so a glycerite, when you make a glycerite, it's 70% glycerin food, food grade glycerin, 30% water. Okay. So even, so think about when you get an alcohol, it's not all water. Um, if you get a 40, 40 proof or an 80 proof, they've got water mixed in them. And we do the same thing with the glycerates. Yeah. So yeah, you're always going to strain the stuff out. And you know, when I do a salve, um, I'm using an oil infusion and we always strain those herbs out as well. Amy loves the soap too. The chilweed soap. Good, 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 good. Um, so the back to our stinging nettle, it is, it is a true vitamin factory. It is one of the, um, most nutrient dense planets in, in our world. It truly is. Um, 
you can get so many vitamins from just using your stinging nettle and an herbal tea. So that's, it's just so intriguing to me. There's, you know, we look at these little plants. Let's keep getting my slivers. Yeah, Megan J just joined us. Hey, welcome in. Welcome in. This will be on a replay too. If you're just joining us, just this little plant. I mean, we can get so many vitamins and, and nutrients out of this. So many minerals in this plant as well. Um, yeah, so it's great as a woman's tonic too. It's very nourishing to, to our uterus. So that's another thing that is just a great quality about that herb. So I'm trying to think of, oh, I want to, any other questions about that? So um, stinging nettle is a pretty safe herb. Now, next month, when we talk about St. John's wort, there are some contradictions. So you want to make sure we'll, we'll talk about that next month and the information will be in your box as well. But stinging nettle on general, uh, unless you have um, kidney problems, because it can have like diuretic properties to it. That would be just one of the things that you would um, want to avoid it for. It's also great. I know there's not a whole lot of guys in here. But it's great for a prosthetic or for um, prostate health. Really good for prostate health. Um, I'm going to share a soup recipe with you guys. So I don't know if you have a, um, you know, I'm going to start writing some blogs on my website too. So I will put this soup recipe in the blog. I will give it to you. But it's so we can use stinging nettles just like we would any other any other vegetable. You know, as long as we um, we blanch it. It's not going to have any stinging properties left. Um, let me look down here. It makes a great pesto, a fantastic pesto. I don't know if I had that recipe in your things or not. But the, um, so yeah, so the culinary and edible uses, there's, it, it has like, um, almost like a spinach taste to it when you like parboil it, you know, steep it down. Um, any questions or anything? No. Okay. Uh, la, 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 la. Oh, I want to talk to you guys about this a little uh, bit. Oh, go ahead. Amy, why does stinging nettle seem so unfriendly when it's actually real beneficial for us? I absolutely hated it before I started studying herbalism. Remember I said about it's like the farmers hate it, hikers hate it, kids learn to avoid it. It Like I was listening to a, a podcast the other day and it talked about the how incredibly nourishing this product or excuse me this plant is and if it didn't have those stings on it it would probably be non-existent on our plant because the animals would also know that it's very very nourishing so i'm gonna like study up i'm i mean i was just having a conversation with you before we started and i'm like well that's that's interesting but like how does anything use it if it's like so stingy so i'm gonna i'm still researching that but yeah, and, and you just barely touch it and it will sting you. Yeah, like a hypodermic needle, like a thousand of them. And it it it's good. So what it's doing is shooting antihistamine into you and actually serotonin. Serotonin is that thing that makes us feel really good. So when you get stung, you're not going to feel really good. But maybe later you will, <laughs> right? Oh, my. But yeah, it's crazy, but it's easy to, it's easy to harvest. And if you have a stinging nettle plant, keep dead, like keep cutting the top off and it will just get bigger and bigger. The one out in front of my house is like getting huge. So keep, keep trimming it and keep using it. And, and this is just a great medicinal herb, culinary herb to have in your, your real house to, you know, especially like you could, if you have allergies, you could think about next spring harvesting your stinging nettle and having it ready in a tincture for, you know, that time of year. Anything else I want to talk about? Something? Nope. Okay. So you may have heard about a doctrine of signatures. Um, that is the thought that a plant will kind of tell some of its possible uses by the way it looks 
Um, the first one that always comes to mind when I talk about that is mullen. Mullen, I was going to grab a little piece of mullen, but I didn't. If you flip over the back of a mullen leaf, what does it look like? It looks like a lung. And mullen is so incredible for respiratory stuff. Um, now, so I'm just going to read this for you guys here. Um, so stinging nettle also has some interesting associations in the doctrine of signatures. Hairs and sting. Stinging nettles are covered in tiny stinging hairs that cause a prickly sensation upon contact with the skin. I think we all know that. The physical characteristics are led to the belief that nettles may be beneficial for conditions related to skin irritations. Okay, so it's irritating your skin. So that's another doctrine of signatures, um, such as eczema and hives. So it may not be the way the plant simply looks. It may be that interaction we had because of that sting. Um, nutrient dense leaves, nettles have highly nutritious leaves that are rich in vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants. The doctrine of signature suggests that the abundance of nutrients in nettles signifies their potent, or excuse me, their potential to nourish and support overall health. Now we wouldn't know that just by looking at it, but we will know that with our studies. And one final thing here, spring growth. So springing or singing nettles tend to emerge in the spring which coincides with the season of renewal and rejuvenation. This aspect of their growth cycle has been associated with their potential to invigorate and revitalize the body. Again, that nourishment. Is there a question? No. So that doctrine of signatures is kind of like folk lore, but I am really intrigued by it. And the more you study herbs and have that doctrine of signatures in the back of your mind, you're going to see how kind of bang on it is a lot of the time. So that's interesting. That's the kind of stuff I like. So um, just a little bit more about the doctrine of signatures. I'm just going to read this for you. And I'm doing it without my glasses. Thank you for castor oil. <laughs> I mean, you don't know. I've been rubbing castor oil on my eyes at night. Okay. And it actually can help with like eyesight. On your eyelids? Yeah. Yeah. And okay. around here. Okay. Some people have put it in their eyes. I haven't done that. But so it helps with inflammation and some, I don't know, well, there's all kinds of people are saying their floaters go away, all kinds oh, of, nice. but anyway, so now I'm reading without my glasses, which is amazing. Thank you, castor oil. So the doctrine of signatures is an ancient concept. That's why I said it's like folklore that suggests there is a correlation between a plant's physical appearance and its potential medicinal or healing properties. Um, it is a belief that certain plants bear signatures or visible clues that indicate their specific use in herbal medicine. And then here's this little disclaimer. While it is not scientifically proven concept, the, the doctrine of signatures can be a helpful tool for beginners in understanding and remembering. That's the thing. We're trying to remember the potential benefit of certain herbs. So I think, it, I think it's really helpful. Oh, well, let me give you the soup recipe, you guys. I'll find it. <laughs> no soup for you. <laughs> I might have to put my glasses on for this. <laughs> it's a, That print's pretty small. Thanks, Corey. I thought it was big. <laughs> <laughs> I just had the dang thing. Oh, here it is. Okay. So... And this is really good. I made it before. So it's, it's pretty simple. And I'm going to put some blogs up on the website so you don't have to write this down. So it's uh, two cups fresh nettle leaves, thoroughly washed. Be careful. One chopped onion. Two cloves of garlic minced up. You know, do that to your taste. Two medium onion or two medium sized potatoes peeled and diced. So it's almost like a potato soup with the nettles in there. Four cups, cups of vegetable broth, or you could use chicken broth. A tablespoon of olive oil, and then salt to taste. And, it, and it's pretty simple. You know, you're just going to saute your, your onions like you would anything else. And um, then you can start adding everything into the pot. It, it really is pretty darn tasty. Um, yeah. Yeah. Oh, and it said this, 
I, I don't really put any other vegetables, but of course you could do that. You could add carrots, celery, spices, let's use some herbs, but it's a really good recipe. I'll put that up on the website as a, a blog thing. Yeah. Any questions? Nope. Okay. So, um, oh, wait, here's one. Okay. Um, more of a comment. I grow radishes and I made a soup out of those radishes, le radish leaves. And it was amazing. Might be about the same. The Ooh, same that'd be good. I'm sure it has a little bit different, like a taste to it, but that's awesome. I love that you did that. Um, oh, here's another really kind of cool recipe too. Now this is in, um, a rosemary glass star again, fire cider. She has all kinds of really great recipes in here. Lots of different fire cider remedies. If you don't know what fire cider is, it's uh, made with robust herbs that are supposed to, to stimulate your immune system and um, keep you healthy. But this, is there something? What page? I have the same book. <laughs> um, 139 I'm looking at. It's called Powerhouse Nettle Vinegar and Vinaigrette. I am going to put my, these, this is little writing, so I am going to put these on. It's called Elisa's Restaurant, or Elisa's, Elisa's Recipe. Let me read you this. Nettle has been used for medicine, food, and fabrics. You can make fabric out of nettle. Did you know that? For centuries by many cultures around the world. It's a powerhouse plant full of vitamins and minerals. It's an excellent source of iron, like I've mentioned. When spring arrives and nettle starts to, sh to show themselves on the farm, I love to harvest Har can't talk, harvest bucketfuls to make a spring tonic with apple cider vinegar. Um, and here's the super easy recipe. So you're gonna make a nettle vinegar, chop enough fresh stinging nettle to loosely fill a glass jar. Pour in enough raw apple cider vinegar, that's really important, with the mother, organic if you can, to cover. Shake well and within a few days, you can start using this wonderful spring tonic. And it gives a nettle vinaigrette that has um, a half a cup of raw onion, a garlic clove, a half a cup of the nettle vinegar, and a half a cup of olive oil, a little bit of salt, and you can add some different things. So these herbs, you know, even though they're medicinal, many of them are culinary as well. So when we can start incorporating some of these beautiful herbs into the food we eat, it's just kind of awesome. Yeah. So that's a cool book. I like that book. And let's see, a couple of these pages marked. Um, this has even smaller writing. It does have smaller writing. I need to put more castor oil on my eyeballs. Uh, if you guys have any questions, let me know. Yeah, this, this is uh, Backyard Medicine. This is that book, Backyard Medicine. That's a nice book too. I'm gonna show you the book I use most often here in just a second. This is a good book. I just noticed printed in China. Of course, of course. Um, nettles can also be used to make a rope, nets, and a linen-like cloth and paper. You can also use it for a dye. You can use it for insect repellent and green manure. What does that mean? Oh no, why would you want green manure? Green manure. <laughs> Maybe without the nitrates, like if you're using a no, nitrates are not natural, aren't they? I don't know. I don't know about that one, guys. <laughs> but yeah, this is a fantastic book. Um, we did the fire cider book. <clears throat> we did the rosemary. I just, I'm not paid by Rosemary Gladstone. I just really like her. And I'll show you my favorite book last. And look, there's another Rosemary Gladstone. This is Medicinal Herbs, A Beginner's Guide. This is a really good book. Okay. What do I have marked in here? In this book, there's actually a, prost a prostate tonic tincture with two parts nettle root, one part nettle leaf, and one part nettle seed. Um, there's actually been studies around this prostate tonic thing that are pretty interesting. So that's a, that's a good book too. And then the final book, which I use a lot, it's this one. This is probably my go-to book that I use a lot. It's got stains all over it. You can tell I use it. Those are the best books. They are. It's, it's just a really, really good book. Um, and again, you know, 
pretty much any herbal book is going to have information about nettle. Nettles are a nourishing herbal food rich in iron, calcium, magnesium. Oh, protein. They are filled with protein. I heard a podcast the other day. I'm trying to think. They made a comparison on protein. I can't remember the actual comparison, but there are tons of protein and, and nettle. Um, yeah, and like when you, you'll see warnings in these and it's pretty much skin irritation from the little hypodermic needles on it. Uh, tinctures, you can use fresh leaves. You can use dry, dry, dried leaves. And you can also tincture the root and the seeds. There we go, guys. Any questions? Yeah, I wish I could really see you guys and hear you guys. I know, that would be... That would be amazing. Yeah, it would feel a little bit more interactive. So I'm working on this. Know that I'm working on it. I want I want these this time together to be uh, worthwhile for all of you. And, and then I also want to have... Because a lot of people, you know, not everybody can, can show up to watch these. So there has to be a replay. That's why I can't do it on TikTok. Uh, you just can't replay an hour-long video. So... Um, but yeah, so that's our that's our beautiful stinging nettle. Yeah, I'm excited. We are um, finishing up with the next herbal apprentice box, and that's I'm feeling like really good about this. And I'll you know you'll see things change and evolve as we go. And please reach out to me if there's you know. If you have a question about something or, um, you know, I make these boxes for you guys and I want to take you into consideration when I'm making decisions about things. So, but yeah, I think that kind of sums up what I wanted to share with you all today. I hope you found benefit in that. And it was fun hanging out with you, even though I can't see you or hear you. So any final questions, thoughts, comments? And, uh, you know, like I said, if you can go to that video I uploaded on TikTok this morning and interact with it so it so it pushes out a little bit more. And then we can also know what you guys who are constantly showing up want. Like, what do you want to learn about? Bryce and I, you know, um, we won't be together. We'll just be online together. She lives in 